In this problem, we're given the acceleration of a particle on an interval from zero to seven, and we're asked to find the velocity of that particle and the displacement function for that particle, given a couple of initial conditions, that the initial velocity is three and that the initial displacement is zero. We also wanna find the total distance traveled over the time interval zero to seven. So we'll start by recalling this information. Uh, if we have the displacement function d of t, if we take a derivative of that, we get the velocity function. If we take a second derivative of displacement, that's the first derivative of velocity, and that's the acceleration. If we reverse this information, we'll notice that the integral of acceleration gives us the velocity function plus some constant, and the integral of a velocity function gives us the displacement function. So let's start right here with this integral of acceleration is velocity. Our velocity function is then the integral of t minus 5 halves. When we complete that integral, we get 1 half t squared minus 5 halves t plus some constant. That is the velocity function for any time t. Now notice that we're given this extra piece of information here, that the velocity at time 0 is 3. Well, that just means if we plug in zero into this function, the function gives us a value of c, but the problem tells us that that velocity needs to be three. So what we just found was that our value of c equals three, and that means that v of t is then one half t squared minus five halves t plus three. Okay, that's very good. We'll box that thing up. We also need to find the displacement function. And we know from this information up here that that function for displacement is equal to the integral of the velocity function. That means we need to integrate this function that we found in part one of the problem, which using our power rule is gonna give us 1 6 t cubed minus 5 fourths t squared plus 3 t plus some other constant. I'll just call it c1. And now we're given an initial condition for our displacement in the problem, d of zero equals zero. That tells me that we should be plugging in t equals zero into this displacement function. The function itself gives us a result of c1, but we know that that initial displacement needs to be zero telling us that c1 is zero, and we now have a function for the displacement of our object. Now we're doing pretty well here. I think that we've answered the first two parts of this question. The final part asks us to find the total distance traveled from zero to seven. Now this could be a very complicated problem because as you learned in the previous video, application number two, the total distance traveled is the integral, in this case from zero to seven, of the absolute value of the velocity function. And as we learned in some of those previous videos, we need to split an integral of an absolute value function up into its pieces, those pieces being where the function is positive and negative. That's going to require that we find the zeros of our velocity function. Where does the velocity function cross the x-axis, in other words? Okay, so we can set our function equal to zero. It would probably be convenient for us to multiply both sides of this equation by two, and we need to factor our function. Hopefully your problem will factor as well, if it doesn't, you can always use the quadratic formula here. But I'm getting that this graph crosses the x-axis at time equals 2 and time equals 3. What that tells me is that I can get a quick sketch of our velocity graph. I can't say exactly what this velocity graph looks like, but it's a parabola. And it opens upwards. And I'm sure this is not drawn to scale. But our velocity function appears to be negative between the time values 2 and 3. That means that we have to take our velocity function, that's this function up here, and integrate it from zero to two, integrate it from two to three, and integrate it from three to seven. That piece of the integral from two to three, we're gonna put a negative sign on, and then we'll do that fairly tedious calculation to get our final answer. Now I am going to do this down here, I suppose. And again, I'm just integrating this velocity function, the same function over and over again, just with different limits. Again, I put this negative sign on the piece of the integral from two to three. This will give us a positive result for each one of these three pieces of this interval. And let's see how it turns out. Okay, simplifying all of those numbers was a pretty tedious process, but there's all my work right there. I got a final answer that the total distance traveled by the particle was about 17.0833 repeating units. So you can stare at this work for a little bit. I'm just going to zoom out. And it looks like that's about as far as it wants to zoom out. So there you go. All right. I hope that helped. Um, I'll see you in the next video.